Hello and welcome back to Ali Knits and Sews. If you're new here, please do subscribe. Every Friday I upload a new tutorial. We already have how to make a beanie, how to make mittens, how to make a baby blanket. And each lesson we're learning a new skill, going up and up to get you to some more advanced skills. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to make a pair of slipper socks. They're going to look like this except the pair that I'm going to make are going to be for an adult. Things you're going to need to get going are a pair of needles. If you would like to make an extra pick there of socks like these are, which is two balls of wool simultaneously, I would advise grabbing a slightly thicker pair of needles. If you would like a thinner pair of socks like the pair I'm going to make and you're only going to use one ball of wool, a thinner pair of needles will be perfectly fine. You can grab yourself a pair of scissors and you can grab either a crochet hook or a darning needle so that we can join the ends together. You will need one ball of wool or two balls of wool depending on how thick you want those socks to be and then if you would like to add a little waterproof sole to the bottom of your heel, I've used leather. If you're vegan and you would prefer to use something sustainable to the environment, you could go for canvas. That'll be perfectly suitable. It's just so that if you go outside and you step on a little puddle or a little moist bit, your sock isn't going to get wet. It's not going to bother you. You can carry on with your life. It also makes the sock a little bit warmer. So if where you live, like us here in South Africa, it gets very, very cold in winter, then this is great because it keeps your feet nice and warm. The socks that I'm going to make are for my hubby and they're going to be quite big. They are a man size 10. So what I've done is I've measured out his foot and I've worked out that this part here from here to here is 27 centimeters long. If you're going to make these for yourself or if you're going to make these for someone else, then I would recommend you do the same. Grab a ruler or a measuring tape and you're just going to measure out from the end of the toe to the heel exactly how long this is and then you're going to measure how wide their feet are. And you can add on like a centimeter or two centimeters on either end of that measurement because you're going to need that space for the thickness of the wool. You're also going to measure out how wide the ankle is. So you're going to take a measuring tape and wrap it around the ankle and then work out how long that is. The number I got was 27 centimeters. And then you're going to need to figure out how long you want this part here, the sock to be. So I personally like it to fold over. So I've made mine 20 centimeters, which would be a little bit longer. So those are the, the, the measurements that I worked out for the sock that I'm going to make. And that's how you can work them out for the sock that you're going to make. So it's how long is your foot? How wide is your foot? Add two centimeters to both of those numbers. How wide is your ankle? How long would you like the ankle to be? add two centimeters to those numbers too and write that down because that's what you're going to work off. I'm going to work off my numbers and you can just adjust it to work off your own measurements. So we're going to start off by making the sole which is this part over here. Every foot size is different so I would recommend that you measure out your feet and if you're only using one ball of wool as I am in this particular tutorial one sorry two stitches equals one centimeter so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this 27 centimeters long if say your foot is only 20 centimeters long then you're going to adjust the measurements that i'm going to give you to accommodate that and where you're going to adjust is going to be in this part here so we're going to go over in the tutorial now how to increase to get to this bit here and then you're going to make adjustments based on the foot that you're making this for in this part here. So I've added on 30 lines in this bit here. If you have a much smaller foot, maybe you only need 20 lines, maybe you only need 10 lines. It for me would need to only be about maybe that big so I could probably get away with only 10 lines as opposed to the 30 lines that I've added in here but let's go ahead and let's get started with this first bit here to get started you're going to cast on the toe part which is this bit here 
I'm working off the measurements for um, my husband's foot so I would like it to be 11 centimeters wide for me that works out to roughly 22 stitches but I'm going to go with 20 stitches which means I'm starting out at eight stitches here at the beginning. If you have a smaller foot, what I would recommend, sorry my cat, what I would recommend is to do a little swatch piece first. So if you're knitting it for an adult, 20 centimeters should still be suffice. If you're knitting it for a child, five centimeters as the starting point, maybe more than enough. If it's for a baby, even three cent sorry stitches, uh, five stitches or three stitches, maybe more than enough. So it will depend. So what I would recommend doing is knitting a little swatch one first, make a one sole as a practice. For me, like I said, um, eight stitches for an adult as a starting out point is perfect. It would work for me. It's going to work for a size 10 male foot. So we're going to go from there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cast on eight stitches. So you make a slip knot, pop that on your needle and slide to adjust so that it fits. And we're going to cast on eight stitches. Once you've cast on your eight stitches, you're going to knit all eight of them. Okay, so then we're going to cast on one stitch, we're going to knit a row, then we're going to cast on another stitch, knit that row. Then we're going to knit two rows. Once we've finished knitting two rows, we're going to cast on a stitch, turn around, knit that row, turn around, cast on another stitch, and then knit two rows. And we're going to follow that pattern until we've reached 20 stitches on our needles. Okay, so then it's going to end up looking like this. So just to recap, we're casting on eight stitches here. We knit those eight stitches. Then we cast on a new stitch, knit that line, cast on a new stitch, knit that line, and then it's knit two lines, cast on a stitch, knit, cast on a stitch, knit, knit two lines, cast on a stitch, knit, cast on a stitch, knit. And you do that up until you have 20 stitches on your needle and what you're going to do then is you're going to measure out how big this piece is from here to here so my piece is seven centimeters and this is going to be the toe it's also going to be the heel so it's going to be seven times two and I want the length in total to be 27 centimeters so I take 27 and I subtract 14 centimeters, that's 7 and 7, and what I'm left with is what we're going to knit here in the middle part, and that's what you're going to work out for your own sock. So in my case, this part here works out to 13, sorry, 14 centimeters. Remember that 1 centimeter is 2 lines. It's also two stitches, it's two lines and two stitches. So then I'm going to take 13 and I'm going to times that by two to figure out how many lines I need to knit. And that works out to 26 lines. I got to 26 lines with this one and I gauged it and I realized I actually needed a few more lines and I would advise the same for you. So work out how many you're going to need here in the middle knit those out and then measure it again and if you think you maybe need a few more lines after you've already measured and added in that you're going to have your little heel part coming in which for me was seven centimeters if you need to keep knitting then keep knitting which i did so i ended up making 30 lines here and then in the decrease process down here this measured seven centimeters so seven seven and this is 13 so i hope that makes sense to you and then you're going to do this twice because you have two feet i'm so sorry and then you're going to have your two heels okay so once you have knitted this whole middle part you're then going to begin the decreasing process and it's going to work exactly the same way 
that you increased but in reverse. So what you're going to do is you're going to decrease, de sorry, decrease, knit, decrease, knit, knit two lines, decrease, knit, decrease, knit, knit two lines, decrease, knit, decrease, knit, and so on until you're left with eight or however many stitches that you worked out you needed left on your line. And I'm in that process now, busy decreasing. And once we're done with this, we're going to make the front part of the sock, which is this, the half moon. Okay, so in order to make this half moon toe part here, this, this bit here, it's pretty much exactly the same pattern as the first part here for the sole in that we cast on eight stitches, we increase, knit, increase, knit, um, knit two rows, increase, knit, increase, knit, knit two rows, except four. Once I got to the 20 stitches, I increased one and then I knit the row and then increase another one, knit the row, and then the gap between those two increases, instead of being two lines, becomes one line. So it's a little bit more rapid. And then I increased, I carried on increasing all the way through to 28 lines on my needle. And the reason for that is because once you've cast this bit off here, it gets a little bit tight. And if this fits too snuggy, then there's not a lot of space for the foot to come through here. So you want it to gather up like this so that there's room for the foot. See what I mean? So I'm going to show you how I did that now. So to begin with, we cast on eight stitches. And just as with the heel, I cast on those eight stitches and then I knit all eight. Then I increase one stitch, knit that line increase another stitch, knit that line, and then it's knit two rows, increase knit, increase knit, knit two rows, increase knit, increase knit. And we're going to do that now until we get to 20 stitches on our needles. Okay, so we've just reached 20 stitches on our line. And now to get it to go out like this, we're going to increase, knit that row, increase knit that row and then there'll only be one line that you knit before you increase increase again so you're going to do that for me i did that until i got to 28 stitches on the line so that i have an additional four stitches on each end so this is 20 stitches wide which was the 11 centimeters Remember that if your foot's smaller, you don't have to go all the way to 20 centimeters. You can do, um, sorry, 20 stitches, you could do less. Say if your foot was only 10 centimeters wide, maybe you're only going to need 18 stitches. Um, but yeah, for this male sock, I'm going to 11 centimeters here, which was 20 stitches. And I'm going to need an extra four stitches on either end so that it creates that puckery shape like that. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. You're now going to increase, knit, increase, knit, and then it's one line until you reach the number of stitches that you want it to be, which will be approximately four stitches bigger on either end than your original sole was. Once you've arrived at your 28 stitches, or however many it is that you worked out for your own uh, toe area, you can then cast off. Next, we will begin making this heel part here. It's very straightforward. It's literally just a rectangle. So in order to make this heel part here, what we're going to do is we're going to take our sole and our toe if you hear any scuffling i have guinea pigs they may make a little bit of noise they live in my office so sorry about that right back to making socks so what you're going to do is you're going to take your sole and you're going to take your toe and you're going to line up the top of the toe perfectly onto the sole and you're going to line up 
the sides of your sock all the way perfectly like that and you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side and then you're going to measure this distance from here accurately with a measuring tape all the way to here so mine comes out at you wouldn't believe it 27 centimeters yet again it's lucky number with these socks if i measure from here all the way to here i get 27 centimeters and then what we're going to do is we're going to cast on 10 centimeters onto our straight needles <clears throat> And you're going to knit for exactly 27 centimeters, whatever that measurement is for you. You're going to knit that measurement and you're going to cast off when you get there. We'll do a quick demo on how to do that. So we make a slip knot, pop it on our needle. Cast on eight stitches. Sorry, 10 stitches. And then knit those stitches until your piece is the length that you would like it to be. When you get to the end over here, you can just cast that off. Also, I just want to mention that previously I said 10 centimeters here. I'm sorry, my brain is absolutely breaking. When I'm saying centimeters, I mean stitches and stitches instead of centimeters. So this is 10 stitches just to be absolutely clear, but I am going to put a written pattern in the description of this video. So for anyone struggling to follow me, don't worry, just go up and read the written pattern. Okay, so next up we're going to make the ankle part. So that's going to fit on the sock like so. Over here like that. It's going to end up fitting up over here. And how we do that is you're going to go back to the measurements that you had. So I worked out that the ankle should be 27, there's the lucky number again, 27 centimeters long. And as I mentioned right at the beginning of the video, I want this sock to be able to fold over because I think it looks nice. So I've made it. 20 centimeters tall so that when this is all joined together and it folds over like this here it yeah it will be 10 centimeters so it'll look quite cute so to make this it's very simple pattern as you can see that's basically just a square or a rectangle i have cast on 30 five stitches here which equated to 20 centimeters long remember that it would be advisable to knit yourself a gauge so that you can see how many stitches on your particular needles will equal to exactly how many centimeters so maybe just knit a little square that's 10 by 10 and then measure that and you'll see what your centimeter to needle gauge is Minus two stitches equals one centimeter or just there under. So 35 stitches came to uh, 20 centimeters. So it was almost a two to one ratio. Very, very close. Okay. Again, I am going to include all of this in a written pattern description at the top in the, in the description of the video. So don't worry if you're getting a little confused. If I'm confusing you, I'm confusing myself trying to explain this. But yeah. Okay, so I cast on 35 stitches and I knitted for 27 centimeters to create this ankle. So now it's the final part, we're going to put the whole sock together and we're going to add this heel. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our darning needle or crochet hook, in this case I'm going to use a darning needle so I can teach you a new skill, and we're going to put all the working parts together. So we've got our heel, our toe, the ankle and the sole, and we're going to join them all together, the needle and the wool. So you can just cut off a lengthy piece. I normally like to work with it, you can't see my arms, but it's a wide open arm length. 
which is approximately a meter. Feed that into your darning needle and we're going to start with the toe and the sole. And we're going to line everything up perfectly. What you can do in this case actually is take these two ends here and tie them together so that you know everything's lining up properly. Then just continue to line everything up nicely. Please excuse my neighbor's dog, say that she don't stop. So if, if I pause my camera every time they bark, I'm never going to get this done. And then you go in through here. Oh, Sorry, I actually just pulled that out now because I noticed that on this end here, I've got a loose bit, so that would be better. So I'm just going to line everything up to <laughs> the Albert Boons in Betty's Bay where I live. And there is a lone male um, doing rounds today. So I think this is why the dogs are so triggered. Um, he literally came up to our house this morning and startled our dog who is petrified of them because we have a lone male by the name of Stompy who got his name because he's got a half tail and anyway Stompy's already tried to attack Billy my dog our dog so and he's been in our house and he's just been a nightmare so now every time a baboon comes around our dog just goes into like terror bark mode and yeah so I think I saw one this morning so I think that's what's going on there. So yeah, sorry about that guys. Barkingdogs.com Alright, so I, I think you saw there I connected the loose end from the toe to the loose end from the new thread that I've just added in here. And I'm now I'm just going to sew all the way around here. So, so, so. All the way and connect it perfectly. So what I normally like to do is go either in between the lumps, the bumps, or I go into the lump bump. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to go through both because I just want to make sure that the sock is, you know, connected properly. So I'm going in between, we can call it a groove, in that groove, and then into the lumpy part as well. I'm just sewing that all nicely together. It may take a little more time, but it will just make sure that there are no holes when I turn this around. And also that it's going to survive the washing machine and it's going to survive for a long time. And we'll be able to have these socks for hopefully a couple of years. But you know what it's like with puppies, hey? Especially when leather's involved, so... So I've just reached the end of the toe part and we're now going to attach the heel which is this part. I would have been wise to grab some pegs to do this but I'm just going to carry on. <laughs> um, so as I did with the top of the toe I'm just going to connect the loose ends to the other loose ends to secure them in tie it together like that and when we go through knots just feels like a good amount of knots and makes me feel safe and then we join it around nice and neatly and then we can begin sewing this in I'm going to take the other loose end and I'm actually just going to connect it to the thread that's attached to the darning needle quickly to just secure that part in nicely as well. It's like that. Just make sure that we are um, distributing this piece around the heel evenly. 
and also just to keep things extra secure and tight and durable for the future. I think so. Maybe one more go. And I'm now going to sew this fill part down like that, all around, this way. And then I'm going to sew it into this area here, like this, and like that. So we're going to sew that into. We'll start by going around the heel, that part's pretty basic, and then I'll do a close-up of me going up this part here. I've just come around to this loose end here. I'm just going to reattach it to my um, thread with a darning needle attached to it, just to really secure everything. So we are eventually going to either cut these off or we're going to work them into the sock depending on how safe I feel the um, loose ends are. Generally speaking, it's always better to work it in. And although I do prefer a short method, as in a short piece, and then just um, crochet it in, it looks tidier if you take a long piece and work it in properly. But the sock is going to be turned inside out when we're done adding all the pieces together. So it's, it's not extremely important. What's more important is that these knots don't come undone. That's very important. So yeah, we'll gauge it when we get there. Coming back around to the other side. We're going to do the same thing with the loose ends here. Just retie it all together. Like so. It's very, very cold and wet and windy today, so it's really a great day for some of these socks. Very lucky hubby. I might make myself a few when we're done. I could use a pair. Okay, so we're literally just going to go up here. Just going to follow this line here. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just going to go in there and there. It's are getting a little bit curly. I'm wanting to make knots now. So like I said, it's very cold, wet, wintry weather today. So this lighting is just fabulous. I'm sure you can make out what I'm doing. I really hope. We're just going all the way up here, just connecting these ends together. And then when I'm done with this side, I'm just going to hop over to the other side and do the same thing over here. So this is what it looks like so far. Like a kind of like a little shoe. It's pretty cute. So now we're gonna add the ankle part. What I would advise to you is to start on the one end. So grab your end like that and work it around like this before you join. So Kind of hard doing this backwards and upside down and all that so you take your slipper 
and you take the one end with the, the uh, lines going downwards like that and which I'm not doing now lines going downwards like this and you you put it in the corner <laughs> my brain is dead I'm so sorry you put it in the corner and you follow it like this so you're gonna sew it in like this now all the way around like that until you come back to the other side like that then join them together here and then sew it together here just so that you don't have like an awkward situation where this somehow isn't fitting nicely on here but it's already joined so you want to just join that at the end because then you can work it into itself but I'm going to show you what I mean in a close-up now okay so this end's going to start over here in this corner in this corner here I'm going to put my darning needle in and I'm going to feed it through so that I have the loose end to connect oh too far sorry about that let's try that one more time feed it through oh, there's that there again and we're going to tie this piece to it now so those ends are all connected now they're tied together and I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm going to start sewing these sides together and I'm going to go all the way around very similar concept to if any sewers in here um, when you're adding a sleeve you don't want to actually close that sleeve before you attach it to the armpit area because if it doesn't fit exactly then you're going to have a bit of an awkward um, look gap sort of puckering situation so you always sew the open sleeve onto the armpit and then you close it up once that whole thing's connected so it's the same concept here we're adding the ankle open around the back of the heel first before we sew it closed I really think I'm gonna have to re-upload this video because I just don't know if I'm explaining any of this properly. I'm so sorry, guys. But you know, you'll at least be able to see what I'm doing and, you know, make adjustments to your own pattern from there. So even if this isn't perfect and I need to remake it, um, I'll, as I've said it probably like 5,000 times now, I will also include a written description of exactly how to do this because um, the way that um, trying to explain how to make a sock in a very specific size is not going fabulous uh, but I think it's going okay let's see let's see how we go around here okay so you get the gist of what I'm doing here so I'm connecting this around here and we're just going to continue all the way around until we reach the other side and then we're going to sew it up together. Just want to hop in here and show you that I'm trying to match these stitches together just so it looks a little bit more seamless and a little neater. So as you can see, I'm sort of trying to go in there and match those little seams together. Okay, so I've come all the way around and there is a little overlap here and there's that little gap between these two parts here so I'm going to try and stretch all of those stitches into that so it closes nicely and then we're going to go up okay I understand we're going to close this little gap up with this overlay here 
So that's all closed up now. And I'm now going to sew up the side. So once it's all joined together, we're now gonna we're gonna turn it inside out and we're gonna add the sole. But before we add the sole, I'm sorry, before we turn it inside out, we first wanna map how this fits onto the leather quickie. So let me show you how we do that. So you're gonna put it on the leather like that, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a little bit away. A little bit away from the sole so like about that much um, you see there so that you've got a bit of a gap so it's not fitting snug on that seam but there's actually like about a centimeter distance between where if you can see that yeah, you can see it now there's like about a centimeter distance between where the sole ends and the the wooden woolen sole ends and where the leather sole is going to begin because that's going to go a little bit up and over just to make sure that water is not going into this area you can then cut that sole out and we're then going to hammer use a hammer and a nail and we're going to hammer in little holes so that it's easier to so through here because yeah if you're going to try and stick a little plastic even a metal needle through leather you're going to you're going to really struggle so yeah we're just going to add little holes so that we can just sew this thing in nicely i would advise to get yourself a waterproof preferably brown uh a string I don't have that so I've just picked out a ball of wool that's the same color just that it blends in nicely and I'm gonna use that and it'll be fine so if you can't get a hold of as a sole if you can't get a hold of the same kind of string like I'm describing you can just go ahead and use wool you can use the wool you've been using to knit or you can try and match it like I have and place the leather on a wooden board just so it's a little bit easier take your nail like that and warning noise alert noise alert literally just gonna hammer a little hole into that leather like that like so you just want to be able to fit your darning needle through there so Grab it and make sure that you can get that eye part through. That's really the most important thing. See, I can't even get the front part through, so I'm going to have to make these holes even bigger. I uh, don't feel like going and looking for a needle that is big enough to accommodate the size of this eye. So I've just uh, grabbed a embroidery needle and I'm going to use this instead. So how I'm going to get this thick piece of wool through there is I've got a piece of thread. I put the wool across that thread like this. And then I feed those two ends into the eye of that needle. Like this and then pull it through and that way I can get a whole piece of wool through quite a thin iron I'm going to use this embroidery needle instead okay now we can turn our sock inside out or as it would be the right way around because this is technically the inside out and we have a socky poo like that and we're going to line the leather up perfectly onto the sole here with the suede part facing inwards and the leathery part facing outward and we're then going to sew it on I like to stick my hand in like this just to make sure I'm not 
sewing where I'm not supposed to be sewing and you can go in from behind for the first stitch actually I would even go in through the sock so be careful you don't stab yourself now stick your hand in there and go in to the toe remember that you've got about half a centimeter maybe a centimeter here so we're going to go a little bit over that join mark like that's fine go in through but not all the way through like i've done 50 times already and then sure not to lose my thread and regretting not being an octopus with multiple limbs and look at that sorry if you had to witness a double chin there okay and then I'm going to go am I going to go around or in I think we're going to go around so I'll go out that end and into here back in through the wall and then into the next hole like that incredibly stormy outside today So you can see the stitch looks like that. And I'm going to go around in that same formula, catching it, catching it on the outside, trying to keep that line straight, and then going back in through the hole. You will need to keep one hand inside the sock um, a lot of the time because it's very very easy to just sew in an area where you didn't want to sew and then suddenly half your sock is sewn together and it's a disaster so unfortunately this is a very fiddly part it is what it is so la vie <laughs> So yeah, we're just going to carry on. And you're going to go all the way around like this. Whole time making sure that you're not sewing into an area inside of the sock that you didn't actually mean to sew into. Right, I think you get the gist of what I'm doing here, so I'm going to carry on and I'll meet you at the end. Once you come around this side, it does actually get a little bit easier. Because it's not that difficult to have your hand inside guiding the needle and the stitches. So it's not an entirely fiddly job, but, you know, it's craft work. So... There are elements that are perhaps a little more challenging, but these these are so worth it. They're really lovely warm socks and are gonna be so appreciated in this weather. So when you come right around to the end and you've sewed your last stitch where you began, just go into the inside out part and just sew those sorry tie those two ends together nice and neatly 
and tightly more importantly like that and trim it off or work it in whatever you've decided to do I just stuck on the trim and voila guys we have our socky how cute is that little winter booty sock with a nice leather sole that is a male size 10 it is very big so that should keep mr happy pants's feet quite warm you can wear it like that or you can fold it a few times if you want to do that it's also fine whatever tickles your fancy but okay so next week i am going to do a tutorial on how to do some embroidery i'm currently working on a client's jersey that's got a few holes in it and he's asked me to embroider some doggy paw prints onto the holes and i am falling far behind with that so i'm going to just work that into the tutorials and we can learn together how to do embroidery so if that sounds good to you, please stay tuned and I'll see you next Friday.